Hey Mustangs, in these notes we're going to take a look at energy and energy transfer in the ecosystem. Now before we start the notes, you're going to need to go to the class website and print out the notes for this. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we go to the class website, click on honors notes, and then uh, click on 9-4 energy and energy transfer notes. And then don't forget to print two per page. They fit more uh, nicely into the notebook when you print two per page versus whole pages. Um, so go ahead and print those and then come back to the video. All right, now um, we're gonna take a look at energy. Energy is an extremely, extremely important thing for living things. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at how important it is for living things. All right, now before we get into living things, uh, ha have an example of a non-living thing and energy. Um, here we're looking at a car, but not a hybrid car, traditional car that runs on gasoline. So if we take a look at a car, uh, what do cars use for energy? If it's a non-hybrid, gasoline okay so gasoline is the energy for cars will a car work without it so again not a hybrid just a regular old car will a car work without gasoline no it will not because gasoline provides energy that causes the car to move now if you're driving along in a car um, and you go all the way to the point where you run out of gasoline you run out of the car's energy uh, the car is going to stop and it doesn't matter how hard you push on the gas pedal, how many times you turn the key, uh, how much you curse at the car, it's not going to turn on because it doesn't have any energy. So energy is important uh, for movement of things. Uh, and in living things, we're going to see exactly how important energy is and why it's important to living things. So first things first, what is the main source of energy for all life on Earth? Now, sometimes people want to say water, carbon, stuff like that, but that's not energy. If you're talking about those two things, you're talking about matter. So when we're talking about the main source of energy for all life on Earth, say it if you know it, that's right, the sun. Okay, so the sun is the main source of energy for all living things on our planet. If the sun were to go out, there would be no energy available for life on our planet and everything would die. So without the sun, there would be no life on our planet. Um, so there's a couple reasons for that. One, uh, the sun keeps our planet warm enough. Uh, without the sun, our planet would be basically a, fall, uh, a ball of floating ice in the solar system. Um, and then the second thing, the energy thing. Um, so all living things on Earth run on energy that originally came from the sun. So here's how we get that energy from the sun and it becomes a part of living things. Now. Autotrophs and heterotrophs. Remember, autotrophs are organisms that get energy from uh, the sun and use it to make their food, while heterotrophs have to eat other living things to get their energy. So we actually rely on autotrophs, plants usually, in order to get that energy from the sun. They're the only ones that can trap energy from the sun to make their food. And then when we eat them or other living things eat them, that energy gets passed along. Um, now the energy that plants make, um, I'm sorry, the food that plants make uh, is carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, uh, in the case of photosynthesis, see if you remember it, so I want you to think for a moment, um, what, what carbohydrates do plants make in photosynthesis? Hopefully you guessed it, um, it's glucose. Okay, so glucose is a carbohydrate that plants make during photosynthesis, and that traps the sun's energy. And they're the only ones that can do that. They're the only ones that can trap the sun's energy by making glucose. Then when other living things eat them, the energy gets passed along. So we need autotrophs. Okay. Uh, what would happen if all the autotrophs were to die? So all the plants are gone. So heterotrophs can't get energy from the sun directly, no matter how hard we try. You could stand out there in front of the sun, you can feel the heat from the sun, which is a part of the energy from the sun, but you can't use it for energy to run your body. You can feel that heat energy, but you can't use it to run your body. So we need um, the energy stored in carbohydrates. So when we eat food, that's what our body's looking for to get energy. So what we could say is no autotrophs equals no life on our planet. Okay? So if all the autotrophs were to die, uh, everything else would die. The reason for that, it'd be like a domino effect. So if all the autotrophs are gone, all the plants are dead, well, what eats plants? Herbivores. So herbivores won't have a food source anymore, they're gonna die. What eats herbivores usually? Carnivores and omnivores. Um, so they would die. So you'd have this domino effect happen where plants die, 
herbivores, omnivores die, carnivores die because they no longer have a source of energy um, because they can't get energy from the sun anymore. So even if the sun's burning bright in the sky without autotrophs, we can't get energy into living things. So wh why would everything die? Okay, so I want you to be specific with this. Why is it that living things would die without autotrophs? So go ahead and write down your answer to this. Second, do you think this would include humans too and justify your answer? Okay. So why would living things die and would it include humans too? Justify your answer. And we'll talk about this in class. So make sure you write it down in your paper. All right. So energy and organisms. Clearly, um, energy is really important to organisms, but what exactly do they use it for? Why do these organisms need energy uh, in order to stay alive? Well, they need a constant supply of energy for several things. First, to grow. It takes energy to add cells onto your body. So when you're growing, remember you're adding new cells onto your body. It takes energy to do that. Um, right now, you guys are in one of the periods in your life where you're growing the fastest and changing the most. Um, so you need a lot of energy to do that. That's often why teenagers eat a lot of food because they need a lot of energy because they're growing. Movement. Um, you need movement in order uh, to get around. Um, so things that move more uh, tend to need more energy uh, on, on a, a more consistent basis. So movement causes energy. Even if you're, you know, rolling your pencil around, blinking your eyes, that all requires energy. Living things need energy to reproduce. Now, I don't mean to get together and make babies. That takes energy, too. But here I'm talking about when a female is pregnant and a baby's developing inside of her, that takes a lot of energy. Talk to any pregnant woman. Talk to your mom, um, and they'll let you know how tired they feel because when, they're, um, when the baby's growing inside of them, the baby's taking a lot of energy, so they feel tired. The, mo the mother feels tired. So it takes a lot of energy to reproduce as well. And then there's tons of other everyday functions that we use energy for. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't think about this, but thinking. It takes energy to think. Every thought you think, it takes energy to do that. So energy is required for thinking. Um, heck, and energy is even required for passing gas. Okay, It takes energy to get that, ga that gas out of your body. Um, so living things need a constant supply of energy uh, in order to stay alive and do these things. All right. Energy flow in an ecosystem. So an ecosystem is an area where you have all living, all the living and non-living things in one place. Okay? So energy is actually going to get passed along in an ecosystem, and we say it moves in one direction. It doesn't get recycled back. So we say energy goes from the sun. Autotrophs trap that energy uh, in the form of carbohydrates, specifically glucose. And then they get the autotrophs get eaten by uh, heterotrophs, in this case an herbivore, and then herbivores get eaten by carnivores and omnivores and so on. So energy uh, travels in one direction. Um, I've had students say, wait, when it gets to the end here, don't decomposers eat it and then it starts all over again? Well, no, because if it was a cycle, the decomposers would eat the lion here, and then when the decomposers died, the energy would go back to the sun, and that doesn't happen. Okay, so energy moves from the sun to autotrophs, then to heterotrophs in a food chain, which we'll actually be talking about in class. Okay, um, so some of you, I, I want you to really remember that it only moves in one direction. Uh, when it does get to the lion, uh, the energy is lost uh, in gases and heat. Like, kind of, it's, it's kind of lost to the universe. Um, it's not destroyed, but it's kind of just lost to the universe in other forms. Um, now, some of you are going to like this, some of you are going to hate this. Uh, so one way to help you remember that it only moves in one direction is this. Energy moves in one direction. Okay, uh, so the band one direction. Uh, that'll help you remember that only energy only moves one way. Okay? All right, uh, we're going to stop the notes here. We're going to finish the rest in class. Um, so make sure you have everything up to this point written down. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit different than we've done before. And I talked about it a little bit in class. I'm um, going to give you guys a quiz on, as Ed, bleh, on as Edmodo um, for you to show that you did the notes. And now the reason I'm doing this is that is because next year in chemistry, uh, all of your homework is going to be online. So you're going to have online homework. You're going to have to submit stuff online. Here, I want you to prove that you did the notes. Um, and, uh, and take the quiz. So you'll go to Edmodo, you'll log in, uh, and when you log in on Edmodo, uh, look for the quiz assignment, 
and um, and and just answer the questions. I think there's four or five questions that I came up with that you're going to be taking a look at. Okay, um, so good luck with that. Uh, don't forget to do the quiz. And uh, if you have any questions on the Biome project, which my guess is a lot of you do, uh, please don't hesitate to email me, and uh, I'll answer those as quickly as I can.